Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we are going to study multiplying mixed numbers. And multiplying mixed numbers is very easy. All you have to do is change them first to fractions and only then you multiply. Let's do one example problem. Here I have 2 and 2 thirds and then 5 and 1 seventh. And let's multiply them. First I need to change them to fractions. So this into a fraction, okay? You need to remember how that was done, right? There's a shortcut. You go 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2 is 8. That gives you the numerator. And the denominator doesn't change. 3. Basically, 2 whole pies, you count how many thirds are in 2 whole pies. There's 3 and 3, you know, 6 thirds in these 2 whole pies, and then you add the 2 thirds from there. Here we go, 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1, 36. And the denominator is 7. Now we have fractions and we multiply. But before I multiply, I will simplify. Because 3 and 36, they simplify. Both of them are divisible by 3. So I can here divide 3 by 3, leaves me 1. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And now 8 times 12 is 96. And then 1 times 7 is 7. And lastly, we need to write this as a mixed number. Okay, it's basically a division problem. Maybe you want to use long division. 96 divided by 7. 7 goes to 9 once. 1 times 7, 7. Subtract 26. 7 goes to 26 3 times. 21. Subtract. And 5 is our remainder. So, as a mixed number then, we will have 13. 13 whole pies, and then 5 sevenths. Like I said, multiplying mixed numbers is very easy. The difficulty is in remembering that you have to change them to fractions first. And so students sometimes make a mistake that they go like this. One and a half times one and a half. They multiply the whole number parts, one times one. Then they multiply the fractions, half times half equals one fourth. And give the answer like that, you know? So here's an example to try to combat that misconception. That one and a half times one and a half cannot equal one and one fourth. Just think of it this way. Let's say you have a recipe that has one and a half cups or teaspoons of something, you know? One and a half cups of flour. And then you want to take that recipe one and a half times. Surely your recipe will have more than one and a half cups of flour then, and not less, you know, one and one fourth. But I also can show it to you using this area model. Because multiplication like this, I can model it with an area calculation, where this is one side times one side, then the answer will s signify the area. So let's take something that is one and a one, one and one half. One side here is one and one half something. Meters, feet, inches, whatever. Let's say this is one and a one, one and one half meters. And this side here is also one and one half meters. Now, when I multiply this times this, will I get one and one fourth square meters? You see, this much here is one meter. This is one meter. And this is one meter. So this here is alone one square meter. Right? Then here is half a meter times a meter. So this area here is exactly half a square meter. Let me write it inside here. This is a square meter. This here is half a meter times a meter. So again it is half a square meter. And then this area here is half a meter times half a meter, which is a fourth of a square meter. You see? So in total our area would be, you know, these two make a square meter there's another square meter, so we have two and one fourth square meters. And we will also get the same if you if we change these to fractions first. This is three halves times three halves. Now we multiply top nine and bottom four, which is two and one fourth. Okay. Here I have a word problem, and let's solve that. It involves multiplying mixed numbers. This large square here measures 2 inches by 2 inches. 
then inside it there's a rectangle that measures one and three eighths inches by one and one half inches. How many square inches is the shaded area? Now, it's not asking for the area of the rectangle inside it. It's asking for this colored area here. And the main principle is that we find it by subtracting. We first find the area of this larger, this large square, then we find the area inside it and subtract those two. So, let me first mark in my picture what I have here. This is two. And this is two. Then one and three eighths would be this here. And then this is one and a half inches. All right, the outer square has the area of two inches times two inches. So that is pretty easy, four square inches. The rectangle, its area, we will find simply by multiplying the mixed numbers, right? One and one, one half inches times one and three eighths inches. Now I'll change these to fractions. We have three over two, three halves times, and here I get 1, 11 over 8. Now we can multiply, but let's check first if we can simplify. 3, 11, no. 3 times 11, 33. 2 times 8, 16. Okay. Which is just a little over 2 square inches. 2 and 1 sixteenths square inches. Now we have the area of the inside rectangle and area of the outer square. Now we subtract. Colored area is fine, found by subtracting. I take 4 square inches minus that result, 2 1 16th square inches. Okay, 4 minus 2 is 2, and then from the 2 I subtract 1 16th. So I am left with 1 and 15 sixteenths and square inches. There we go.